18 months ago, so that'd be like June 2015. Um, We're okay. originally from San Diego, but um, actually our whole marriage, we never lived in San Diego. Um, and most recently we had been in Wichita, Kansas for six and a half years where we helped plant City Life um, Church in Wichita. And so we moved back to here to plant City Life San Diego. Okay. Yeah, I think that we, um, we, part of it is that we got to be part of an exceptional team, and um, that's not always in the cards for everyone, and so we were this part of this amazing team, amazing staff, and uh, our church grew exponentially very quickly, and um, when we came to San Diego, we said we're not probably going to have that luxury. Um, we don't have the same relationships. We brought a team of 12, 13 people. Um, but once we were here, um, we've seen God do great things. It's just not in the same way we would expect. It's, um, we don't grow like in the same way that like water comes like pouring out of Niagara Falls. It's been this like trickle and this, this slow growth. It's been great and it's been like amazing, but it's also been um, it's been sanctifying to us. It's been it's been hard because you would love to see instant success, and that's not the way that you you, you do relationship. And especially here in San Diego, people people aren't as quick to like just be like, oh, you're a person. Okay, great. You love Jesus. Okay, great. Let's jump on board. Like so many people don't have the history with the church that they have in the Midwest here in, in San Diego. Most people just laugh at the church. It's not even on their radar, and so it takes a lot of time to build relationship with people. And um, to let them know that you love them, not even just to build a church, but because you love them. And um, so that takes time, and that's not that's not going to be quick. Um, but do I hope that one day that like a whole bunch of ice will, will thaw and it will be a raging river? Yes, but right now it's a slow trickle, and it's a beautiful. I feel like one thing is recognizing the sweetness of the church that God has built. I mean, even the people, the workers He's brought to us. Um, I mean, it's so clearly that it's him, it's not us, and we're just so thankful for, uh, it just feels like a family already, and that feels like such a gift, so I think that often we just kind of talk about, like, how sweet, um, how sweet this season is right now with the church, and how we feel so close so quickly, and only God can kind of bring that together, um, I also feel like we know um, building relationships takes time. I mean, we weren't even in our home for the first eight months we lived here. So it's like now we're in our neighborhood, we're getting to know the neighborhood, they're getting to know us, we're trying to build trust, and trust takes time. And um, I don't know if you want to... I think that just understanding that God has called us to something, mm -hmm. um, that when you get on the ground for church planting, you understand how most times it's not really sexy. It's not really this like amazing story. It's it's a slow process. And um, if you're called to it, and if you're called to shepherd, which I think God has really taught us, like um, we're not called to just grow a church, but we're called to shepherd the people God gives us. And so um, uh, there's some joy in that. And also um, to make the decision that we're here we're not leaving, we're not going anywhere. I think it gives us confidence that there's a long game. Like we're playing the long game, we're not playing the short game. And so if we're playing the long game, then we don't have to convert every single person immediately. We can build relationships, we can love them where they're at, and we can learn why God God loves them so much. And and, and he, he can give that to us, and then we can just love them and care for them. And, and, and there will come a time we can share the gospel with them. And there have been times when we've tried, and, and some have been fruitful and others have been not yet, or just like we've gotten the Heisman, but that's okay because we're, we're playing the long game. We love them and we're called to this city and we're called to this part of the city and that's that's just good enough. Um, yeah. Okay, well I love the book Church Planting Wife, or Church Planter's Wife by Christine Hoover. It's just a great resource. I've read it more than once. <laughs> um, and in that she talks about just diving into his word and journaling like I've never been a journaler but both times we've planted that's been a really sweet thing um, and it's fun to look back and see the fears I have see the way God's answered prayers and um, so that's a big thing I think also um, 
just being really careful to communicate what your role is going to be. Um, one of the greatest things Dale has done is not tried to push me into a certain role and our team is amazing that came with us and they all understand that too. Uh, we have a special needs son and they know that my role needs to be home with my kids in a lot of ways and so he's allowed me the freedom to be involved where I want to be involved and not feel like I have to fill all the gaps. And so um, just have that conversation, be willing to to express where you feel like you're gifted. And sometimes we have to function outside of our gifting, but don't let it be too long. Yeah. You know, try to really communicate and allow there to be a void so that someone else can come fill it. Our wife's job is to um, shep help shepherd our family, keep our house a safe place. And then um, from, from then on, uh, yeah, we've asked her to disciple where she feels called. And so that means she's not in kids every week because then how is she going to be um, fed herself? And, and the other thing I just say to dudes out there, um, if your wife's not called to church planting, you're not called to church planting. Pray for her and pray that God would change her heart. Don't force her into it. A little too harsh. That's good. <laughs> Anything else? I love it. <laughs> okay, can I say something like small that's kind of weird? Like, I'm from this city, but not, having not lived here for a while, I was surprised at the culture shock that even I received, especially going to a big city. Mm -hmm. And like grocery shopping was harder. And so just like allowing yourself to grieve for things that you've lost, right. and even the things like your home or things mm. being easier that used to be. Like all of our team, we've had things that kind of surprise us, that are hard that we didn't expect or that we're still grieving 18 months later. And it's like, let yourself feel those things fully um, process that and process that and just know there might be things that catch you off guard. I never um, thought grocery shopping would be hard, but it was harder here. Party sucks in the city. Yeah. <laughs> so getting adjusted to those things, I mean, you just, you don't know what those are going to be. So kind of just know that there are going to be things like that, that that surprise you and allow yourself to feel what, what it makes you feel like when you experience those things. Future church planter, if you're planting, I feel like your first month should be getting your family settled, and that should be your ministry. Getting your family settled. I know how excited you are. You go and take the world by storm. Take care of your family first, set up a home, then go. That was my favorite one right there. <laughs>